We've all seen the movie The 300, which is a caricature of an actual historical battle that took place in the 5th century BC. Um, in the movie, uh, 300 lean, athletic, noble, uh, brave Spartans fight and die against a horde of effeminate, decadent, overdressed, uh, scheming fops. Now, of course, that's a gross generalization of what actually happened, it, uh, although, to be fair, the movie never even attempted to be accurate. Um, but it does illustrate at least uh, the attitudes that the ancients had um, between what they believed was uh, the austerity, the, um, the rationality of the Greeks and the, the Greco-Roman world generally, and the Easterners, which would include, say, the peoples of Mesopotamia, the Persians, um, and so forth, people like that, Middle Eastern type peoples, Semites. If you ask me, however, the real roots of anti-Semitism in Western culture don't come from the struggle between the East, uh, sorry, the uh, the Persians and the Greeks. If you ask me, the main uh, impetus for that sort of thing is the very long, drawn-out struggle between Rome and its arch enemy, Carthage, which took place in the uh, third and second centuries BC. Um, we all know the famous story of Cato the Elder, who would um, stand up in the Senate. He was a senator. He would stand up in the Senate and make a speech, say, on uh, the condition of agriculture in Etruria. And then he would end his speech, Carthago delenda est, Carthage must be destroyed. Completely off topic, but he would end every speech with that. He'd stand up and talk about uh, um, how the uh, mint wasn't producing quality coinage, but Carthage must be destroyed. It's, it's, it's an interesting illustration of the obsessive nature of the Romans and the Greeks' uh, relationship with Carthage. We think of the ancient Mediterranean as Greece and Rome, but there was a third power in there which has, in a somewhat Orwellian way, been erased from the history books, and that was Carthage. And it's interesting because Carthage came within a hair of erasing Rome from the history books, and perhaps that's the nature of the obsession. The Romans hated Carthage. They hated Carthage like they hated no other people. To them, the Carthaginians were everything that was Eastern and disgusting and decadent and superstitious. Um, to the Romans, the Carthaginians groveled before their almighty deities. The Carthaginians wore ridiculously uh, foppish clothes. They wore way too much jewelry. Um, they, uh, they, their entire empire was based not on the acceptable Roman um, idea of land and agriculture, but trade, trade, something as disgusting as buying things and selling things. Their armies weren't, the, the Carthaginian armies were not citizen armies. They were uh, hired mercenaries paid for with the proceeds of Carthaginian trade. Rome had a citizen army like the Greeks did. Um, everything that the Carthaginians did was wrong and alien. <coughs> Now, of course, the, the accounts that we get of the Carthaginians are invariably hostile because they're always written by the Greeks or Romans. History is written by the winners. Um, but one interesting um, illustration of the attitudes that have come right down to us on uh, the ancient attitudes towards the Carthaginians or the Phoenician people in general comes from this book. It's uh, Gustave Flaubert's Salambeau. It's a 19th century French novel. It's, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best novels ever written. Um, it's a novel that sort of obsessed me over the years, and I, I'm, not, I'm not the only one that has admitted to this, the, getting some sort of strange, dark obsession with a novel. Um, I want to read from, uh, uh, read a chapter, or uh, sorry, a paragraph from this book um, that explains um, Flaubert's view of the typical Carthaginian noblemen. A group of Carthaginian no noblemen have um, have gathered in a temple uh, for some something of a senate meeting in Carthage, a meeting of the elders. These men were generally stocky, with hooked noses like those of the Assyrian colossi. Some, however, with their more prominent cheekbones, greater height, and narrow feet, betrayed an African origin, nomad ancestors. Those who spent their whole lives in their offices had pallid faces. Others retained a desert severity, and strange jewels sparked on every finger, tanned by unknown suns. The sailors could be distinguished by their rolling gait, while the farmers smelled of the wine press, dried grass, and mule sweat. These old pirates plowed up the countryside. These profiteers fitted out ship, ships, 
these landowners supported slaves who practiced crafts. These were all they, they were all versed in religious disciplines, skilled in stratagems, ruthless and rich. They looked tired through long anxiety. Their flashing eyes had a wary look. Habitual experience of travel and lies, trade and command, gave their whole person an air of cunning and violence, a sort of veiled and convulsive brutality. One could almost say that's a description, that's a hostile description, a caricature of today's Gulf Arabs. Sneaky, corrupt, decadent people. It goes all the way back 2,000 years, and there's lots in between, but this is the beginning of a series that I'm doing on the origins and the, um, the development of anti-Semitism in our society. To the Romans, the Carthaginians were the ultimate Semitic people. Greedy, scheming, clever, violent, vicious people. Decadent and yet somehow hard. Hard as flint. They weren't, ex they weren't afraid to fight long, drawn-out battles. They expected no mercy from their enemies, and they certainly didn't give any. Um, and as I say, the Greeks and Romans were obsessed with Carthage. In the same way as many people in the West today are, are increasingly obsessed with the Islamic world. Thank you.